Some cars are just more important than others. For BMW, from a global perspective, with consumers loving sports utility vehicles, the X3 is one such car. But from a South African perspective, it's a really special story because the third generation X3 is going to be built here in South Africa at their plant in Roslyn. Let's find out how good it is. I think there is a move right now that the uh, X volume is growing. That has already taken place since a couple of years. And the new X3 is a big part of it. You can see the very high kidneys that we enlarged very much to our predecessor. And also, we changed the fog lights from the rounds to uh, hexagonal diameters. Also, our front lights are very uh, sharp and give them a good present front. We enlarged the wheelbase by 50 millimeters, and also the car and the length has grown by 50 millimeters. Also, you can see we lowered the roof line in the rear, and by that, we give the whole a lot of more dynamic. And according to this change of the roof line, we also were able to reach our aerodynamic best value of 0.29. I've never quite understood why manufacturers want to supersize everything. I mean, think about it. You've got an X1, an X3, and an X5. You've got all of your bases covered. The latest generation X3, if you actually park it next to the first generation X5, they're the same size. Luckily, with this X3, they've now stopped that trend. I think they've got the proportions just right, and rather what they've done is increase the wheelbase. So now the rear passengers actually have a bit more leg room. But I think the real big thrill and the thing that's going to impress you the most between second and third generation X3 is just how they've gone uptown uh, with the interior. And the new layout as well really works well for me. It smacks a bit of a 7 Series. We know just how crazy South Africans are about performance. For the first time ever, there's now an M Performance version of the X3, the M40, and that's the car that we've been driving. I don't quite understand the logic between big, bulky SUVs and turning them into performance cars. And as much as I don't want to like this car, <laughs> you drive it and you go, oh my word, this is just a marvel in terms of engineering. These cars handle like small performance SUVs, it's insane. Three litre, twin scroll turbo, 265 kilowatts, 500 newton meters. It is stupendous how responsive that engine is and the sound coming through the performance exhaust. Surely people are gonna buy it just for that. But obviously coupled with BMW's X-Drive all-wheel drive system with real rear-wheel drive torque bias, the car is, is incredible. I mean, the levels of grip, stupendous on those mountain passes. And then I've got to stop getting excited because unfortunately, we don't all drive out of our driveway onto a mountain pass. It's a car you've got to live with every day. And that's where the compromise comes in. Because to get a big piece of metal to handle like a small sports car, the ride is really, really firm. Obviously not helped by the fact that it's on 21 inches and run flats as well. Amazing from a handling perspective, but to live with every day, probably a little bit on the firm side. But what was quite interesting is we did what probably most X3 owners will never do, take the car onto gravel rutted roads. And I think BMW with this launch route were actually pretty brave because it really is going to test the integrity of your dampening system. And I think therein there has been a massive improvement as well. So I can only just imagine if we were really impressed by how this performance orientated X3 handled, I think getting into the 2 litre diesel, 3 litre diesel, that comfort mode is going to be even more compliant. Those for me would be the cars that you would buy. They're the ones that really fit what a sports utility vehicle is all about. Less performance and more utility.
This is not a case of three strikes and out, but rather third generation out of the park. This car is so good. I think they've got everything right now from a styling perspective. There is nothing that seems out of proportion. The interior has been uprated with their new layout and obviously being petrol head crazy South Africans, the fact that finally we have an M performance derivative in the X3 is really cool as well. But this obviously is big news. Car is going to be built here in South Africa. They look at probably April when the first models will be rolling off, uh, off of the production line. So uh, they've really done a great job. For me, where would I spend my money? If I could drop myself onto a mountain pass and not have to negotiate with work, this would be the one to buy. But I think from a practical everyday drivability perspective, a two liter diesel or three liter diesel if you want a bit more performance is gonna be the one to go for. Or you can wait until September next year when they bring out the two liter petrol.